Just roughly four miles away from Utah Beach is the village of Saint-Marie du Mont. The Mont in question is the slightest hill raising the church at the heart of the village above occasional floods in the area. It was not a village anyone thought about very much until June 1944. Now, people visit from across the entire world. Saint-Marie-de-Mont was the first community to be liberated on D-Day. It's a liberation that did not go to plan. In 1944, the village of Saint-Marie-de-Mont was occupied by 60 enemy soldiers of the 191 Artillery Regiment. The Germans used the church tower as an observation post and on a clear day they could see all the way to the sea. They expected an invasion near Calais, but they did not know the village was at the southern edge of one of the Allied drop zones for the paratroopers. The Allies started a heavy coastal bombardment just after midnight on June 6th, 1944, and the first American paratroopers were dropped in the early hours over occupied Normandy. The plan was that the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment and the 3rd Battalion of the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division would land in this zone. Here, behind Utah Beach, they would be responsible for clearing a route for thousands of soldiers arriving by sea from England. It was a near impossible task. A thick fog bank and heavy flak from coastal guns forced pilots away from their targets and left paratroopers in unknown territory, some facing enemy fire while still in the air. Just two thirds of troops designated for this zone were accurately dropped. A number found themselves landing in and around Saint Marie de Mont while quickly fighting for their lives with the rather surprised enemy. Between Saint Marie de Mont and the sea stood the Braycore Manor farm, and in its fields was the number six battery of the 90th Artillery Regiment with four 105mm howitzer guns. These guns were firing onto exit two of Utah Beach which led to the village. These guns caused huge damage and injury while disrupting the landing of men and supplies. Now, this didn't actually click with me while playing Hell Let Loose, but these four howitzer guns are the guns destroyed by Winters and the members of Easy Company in episode two of Band of Brothers, Day of Days. Winters was ordered to take a group of his men to break core and neutralize what was thought to be just a howitzer and a machine gun nest. Around 8.30 a.m. he gathered a team of 12 men from Easy and other companies. Their reconnaissance revealed four howitzers in a line hidden by hedgerow, linked by trenches and covered by machine gun MG42 nests. The soldiers would be up against a 50-man platoon of elite German troops defending the guns and the gun crews. Lieutenant Winters strategically placed his men around the German encampment. Two 30 caliber machine guns with two men to each, one man up a tree and others on the ground. Men crept towards the first machine gun nest as their comrades began firing to distract the enemy. When they got close, they threw in grenades to take them out. As the machine guns were knocked out, the big guns were next. Once the Germans realized they were under attack, they responded vigorously. A small group of reinforcements arrived, but the US soldiers were still hugely outnumbered. It was a full-scale battle, but thanks to Lieutenant Winter's clear thinking, the Germans were outmaneuvered. Breakor was a remarkable success for the Americans. Just four US soldiers were lost and two wounded. Lieutenant Winters and his men had killed 15 enemy and wounded many more and taken the rest as prisoners. Winters ordered the four howitzers disabled to ensure a safer landing for thousands arriving in Utah Beach. In the battery he found a map detailing all the German defences in the Utah Beach area and for his actions Lieutenant Winters was presented with the Distinguished Service Cross and 13 of his men received awards for their bravery that day. The strategy Lieutenant Winters successfully used for a small force to overwhelm a much larger one is still taught today in military schools. American paratroopers have been landing in and around the village of saint marie de mont since the early hours of the 6th of June. One young man, Ambrose Alley of the 3rd Battalion 501st, landed on a roof and after unbuckling his harness slid down a drainpipe to the ground. Several German soldiers who had been hiding in the trees rushed out and pushed him up against a wall. As they got ready to shoot, a hail of US bullets came at them from the church tower. Some were killed, 
Others fled, but Ambrose was saved. Years later, when asked why he decided to be a paratrooper, all of them were volunteers. Ambrose said simply, extra money. We got more money than the infantry. I didn't know what I was getting into. We were on the front lines of everything. Blacks around Samory de Mont tell the story of liberation. Sergeant David Buck Rogers and Major Isaac Cole had fought their way to take prime position at the top of the church steeple. But by mid-morning, the church tower was under artillery fire from the Holdy Battery. It was friendly fire from the US troops at Holdy who had thought the steeple is still occupied by German forces. The tower would be taken by both sides over the next few hours. One paratrooper landed near the centre of the village and took up a position in the recess behind the village water pump. His back to a thick wall, he took full advantage of his protected position to kill several of the enemy soldiers. There were skirmishes across the village until early afternoon when the Sherman tanks of the 70th Tank Battalion and troops from the 2nd and the 3rd Battalions of the 8th Infantry Regiment started arriving from Utah Beach along Exit 1 and Exit 2. With their help, Sam Marie de Mont was finally liberated. But the village was not completely clear of enemy soldiers. Around 6pm, the village priest heard a sneeze in his apparently empty church. It came from the confessional box. Quickly fetching an American officer, they investigated and discovered two terrified German soldiers who were quickly taken prisoner. For the rest of the Battle of Normandy, several thousand American soldiers would march through the little village of Saint-Marie-Dumont. I hope you like this look at the history of Saint-Marie-Dumont. If you did, then please give this video a like, and if you're not subscribed, then subscribe for more. Please leave a comment with any feedback down below, as this is the first video I've done looking at the history behind the maps in Hell Let Loose. And thank you guys for watching, and I hope I see you in the next one.